Operation Make Soil Sexy Again. <laughs> What's good everyone? Welcome back to the Strong Sisters YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to just briefly discuss some of the potential environmental consequences of conventional agriculture practices and then share some of the regenerative agriculture principles which in general have been shown to increase percent organic matter and improve the soil health. So in case you are new here, my name is Ashley and my sister and I, Sarah, run the Strong Sisters. We recently moved out to a new farm property in a rural town in southwest Michigan in order to chase our passion of starting a regenerative farm. So we are starting a regenerative farm from scratch with zero experience. That's right, first generation female farmers. We kind of gave up everything in order to pursue this passion. So we're really excited to share this journey and document this journey with you all so that some of you guys can join us on this path towards creating a better food system and improving the health of our soil. So I'm currently standing out on Angel Acres. This is part of the 26 acre plot of property that we purchased. It has been used for conventional corn soy crop rotation for the last 10 years and our goal is to convert this row crop field into beautiful perennial pastures and increase that percent organic matter through using regenerative agriculture principles. So I'm sure the field right now as it stands is pretty recognizable for many of you all in the Midwest where we see this type of land uncovered barren for most of the year. So after harvest of the cash crop, whether that's corn, soy, etc., the land is left barren until the next year when the next cash crop is planted. So something that Sarah and I have recognized over the past couple of years is that one of the biggest environmental concerns that we all face is the rapid loss of topsoil due to conventional agriculture practices such as leaving the land barren for most of the year. So what are some of these conventional agriculture practices that can be destructive to soil health? The first is tillage. So tillage is the process of turning over the soil to prevent weed growth and to prepare the soil for seeding. Farmers commonly use synthetic fertilizer and spray that across the field and then also use a lot of killing chemicals, a lot of the sides such as fungicides, herbicides, pesticides, the list goes on. Another common practice in conventional agriculture is monocropping. So this idea of just planting one or maybe two crops in rotation each year. So for example, this field has been used for corn and soy crop rotation. So it rotates each year, corn, soy, corn, soy, and that's all that's planted on the field. And then the fourth common practice is that they typically leave the land barren for most of the year. They just have the land covered when it's time for their cash crops to grow. After harvest, they typically do not plant anything and leave the land pretty barren until they plant their next cash crop the next year. So now we're going to briefly touch on some of the potential consequences of these type of conventional agriculture practices. So tillage has been shown to release carbon from the soil as the plow moves through the field. It almost like releases carbon burps, and this is well documented in a research study. Next, those synthetic fertilizers that are sprayed all across the field, those provide the plants with free nutrients, and so the plants don't have to work for their nutrients. They do not have to establish relationships with important fungi networks in the soil. One example is mycorrhizal fungi. When plants are not sprayed with free synthetic nutrients, the plant roots in the mycorrhizal fungi have a symbiotic relationship that is not established when plants are sprayed heavily with synthetic fertilizer. So that symbiotic relationship is really important since the plants pull carbon from the air through photosynthesis and feed those fungi carbon in exchange for a wide array of nutrients throughout the soil. Plus, all of those sides that are sprayed, the fungicides, pesticides, herbicides, they don't discriminate between good and bad. They pretty much destroy any type of living thing that are beneficial for the soil, like fungi, bacteria, and beneficial insects. And so this can have destructive consequences to the ecosystem in the field. So next up, monoculture practices. So this idea of just planting one or maybe two types of plants, it really depletes the soil of nutrients and it depletes the soil of organic matter. So soil with less organic matter has less pores, it's less spongy, instead it's more compacted. And as a result, water can't easily infiltrate into the soil. So instead it just runs off of it. And along those same lines, the practice of leaving the land barren for a good percentage of the year makes the soil more susceptible to wind and water erosion. 
So erosion typically redistributes the topsoil, which is the layer of soil that has some of the most important nutrients, to another location. Many times, the water and wind erosion brings the soil, which also includes all those synthetic chemicals and fertilizers, into nearby waterways. And it has been shown that a lot of that goes into the Mississippi River and can be dumped into the Gulf of Mexico, creating those dead zones. So with all these irregular weather patterns, we see a lot of land that is more susceptible to drought because the soil is not able to soak in and save water for future usage and land that is more susceptible to flooding because the soil does not allow the water to infiltrate in due to the lower percentage of organic matter, which gives soil those pores and that spongy look. So we personally believe that there is a better way to produce food and that is through regenerative agriculture principles. This type of farming is better for our climate, better for our soil, better for the animals, and better for our health. So some of the regenerative agriculture principles include one, limit soil disturbance. So stop doing tillage, use no-till seeding methods, and also stop with the synthetic fertilizers, the fungicides, the pesticides, the herbicides. So less fertilizer use, getting sprayed with less free nutrients means that the plants need to get their nutrients from somewhere else. So they will establish relationships with these important fungi networks in the soil, create these symbiotic relationships where they will feed carbon through photosynthesis to these fungi in exchange for a wide array of nutrients, producing more nutrient dense, healthy food. Another important principle is year-long green. So this idea of having the soil covered with soil armor. So this is through the use of cover crops. So essentially the idea would be after harvesting cash crops, you would plant your cover crops. So this would allow for living roots to be present on the soil all year round and cover and protect the ground from wind and water erosion. Having living roots on the ground and these cover crops also maximizes your photosynthetic possibilities. So the plants are performing photosynthesis all year round, pumping more carbon from the air into the soil in order to feed those fungi networks. Another important regenerative agriculture principle is this idea of animal integration. So animals grazing around the field because nature just does not function without animals. So animals grazing on plants stimulates those plants to pump more carbon into the soil. I like to think of animals grazing and biting at the plants like building muscle in the gym. So when we work out in the gym, we're actually causing micro tears in our muscles and our body pulls nutrients from our food in order to regrow and rebuild those muscles even stronger. So that biting of the plants stimulates the plants that, hey, we need more nutrients in order to properly recover from these animal bites. So grazing stimulates root activity, but it also helps keep weeds under control and the animals pooping and urinating all over the field adds natural fertilizer to the fields. And the final principle that we're gonna talk about is diversity. So nature thrives on diversity, both in plant species and in animal species. How often do you see these super large farms planting more than one or two crops or more than one type of animal? such as CAFOs, hog markets, or all these chicken factories. So these regenerative agriculture principles help improve the health of the soil and increase carbon sequestration rates. So the benefits of increased carbon sequestration include one, there is less carbon in the atmosphere and more carbon cycled into the soil. And second, an improved capacity to hold and store more water. A single 1% increase in percent organic matter in the soil can add as much as 16,000 gallons of water storage per single acre in a field. And this is accomplished because that percent organic matter helps build porosity throughout the soil, meaning there's more micro pockets for the water to infiltrate and be stored in the soil. So healthy soil equates to proper functioning ecosystems that are less susceptible to droughts and flooding. And I know a lot of these principles that I just discussed are kind of hard to see visually or to see firsthand. However, I do think that the implementation of cover crops is quite easy to understand and observe. So cover crops are this idea of planting a diverse mix of seeds after harvest of your cash crops. This will allow the soil to have protection for all parts of the year and maximize that photosynthetic capability of your fields to pump more carbon into the soil. So Sarah and I were driving in our area the other day and we saw two different fields on the left and right side of the road. On the left, we've got the conventional corn and soy crop rotation fields that have been left barren after harvesting the cash crop during the fall. So the soil is not protected and is more susceptible to wind and water erosion. And on the right side of the road, the farmer planted cover crops after harvesting their cash crops. So you can see there is green foliage all across the field. The soil is protected from wind and water erosion. Plus, 
the plants are maximizing the photosynthetic capability of this field all throughout the year. And planting these cover crops will add diversity and ultimately reduce the amount of synthetic inputs required for future seasons. So I know I talked a lot in this video, but this discussion of how our food is made and the environmental consequences are important since 95% of the food that we consume is made from the soil. So when we destroy or when the soil is deteriorated, what are we going to do? Just consume lab made food? So regenerative agriculture works with nature rather than against it. It fosters the relationship between plants and fungi. It builds topsoil and it allows us to produce healthy food in order to support a healthy population. And I know many people will point at me and say, say, and say, what do you all know? You are first generation female farmer with zero experience. And you know, you are right. However, we have done a lot of self-education and reading over the last few years. And so if you are interested in learning more about regenerative agriculture, I'd recommend checking out the documentary documentary, Kiss the Ground, Sacred Cow. Check out Gabe Brown and his book, Dirt to Soil. Check out White Oak Pastures Life Cycle Analysis, which shows that their beef operation operates at a net carbon negative. Check out the book, The Vegetarian Myth. Check out the Rodale Institute. You can also search Google Scholar for regenerative agriculture papers, such as the work from Dr. Jason Roundtree at Michigan State University. And of course, check out the Savory Institute and Alan Savory's work about regenerative agriculture and holistic management. Something that you can do today to support regenerative agriculture is to find and support your local farmer. So you can find yours at www.eatwild.com, localharvest.org, or you can use the regenerative agriculture locator map at regenerationinternational.org. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. If you have not already, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to continue following along our journey of following our dreams and starting a regenerative farm from scratch. Until our next vlog guys, make sure you are behaving like an angel.